Hello and welcome to the Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. It's Friday, October 29, 2021. We are back. It's exciting, of course, to return for another wonderful installment and everyone's favorite uh, well, market update series. We're back. Jason. Jason. I think Jason's here with us today and he's got a new mic. Very excited to show off. Absolutely. Well, Happy there. Happy Friday, everyone. Happy Friday, indeed. Happy, uh, happy ETH all-time highs to those hodlers out there. Uh, yeah, impressive stuff, right? Um, with that said, guys, hold on. Let me boost. So for some reason, the music isn't coming through today. What's up with that? Uh, bear with me one second. Yeah, all-time high for new uh, for Ethereum hodlers today, as well as uh, major indices today, also posting fresh all-time highs. All right, let me just turn up this boost here. Okay, good. Audio should be should be coming through quite clearly now. And I'm going to just turn down Jason because he's going to come in super loud. Jason, can we get a mic check from you? I just want to make sure audio levels are good. Whoa. How is everybody doing? Good. Going to boost Jason just a little more. All right, I should do it. With that said, guys, we are back. Hope everybody enjoying the first week of the new show format. Justin, of course, held it down on the stream yesterday. We went solid two hours. It was very, very exciting. I love the energy. Good vibes all around. Uh, great turnout in the chat. A lot of people excited to have Justin back. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna we're gonna be enjoying this new format, I guess, from here on out. And uh, Jason, Jason is in the hot seat today. Uh, look, looking forward. Stuck with me on Fridays, so let's have some fun. Wednesdays too, or the Wednesdays? No, your Tuesdays. That's right. Jason will return next Tuesday, so we're gonna get into everything today. I mean, uh, and it, it's, uh, I just want to get into that a little bit on just yep. like doing it in different days. It's just crazy. Like the last show I did was on Tuesday, and now it's Friday. Like it's just so much has happened. It feels like so much action has happened between then and Friday. It's wild, man. The volatility has been epic you know, it's not a uh, rip to all those lower time frame high uh leverage traders yesterday was probably a shit show for you <laughs> uh yes leverage uh probably stung in both directions um i think a former version of myself would have been uh, wrecked on a uh, on the volatility uh oh, here of the lot this week mm-hmm Lucky for me, I've learned from my from my mistakes of the past, and uh, now I know when to stay out. I know when to not overtrade, and for me, that's all too all too uh, too all too frequently. But with that said, uh, let's go ahead and uh, yeah, guys, we got 90 minutes in store for you. We are going to get into the news before we, of course, check out the latest going on in bubbles. We'll shout out the audience, and then we will get into the daily scan TA portion. Jason will take us through some of the charts. A lot going on in the markets, guys. Major indices popping off, all-time highs today. The Dixies doing something funky. Wild. Like, I thought that it was good. Like, yesterday with the close on the Dixie, that it was going to be one of those, like, all right, this is kind of the nail in the coffin for the Dixie for the while, and markets are going to run, and then we just got that crazy bullish engulfing candle off of it. Yeah, um, very, very. I mean, I yeah, but it's important to re recognize that it closes in like six hours for the month. So it's a big monthly close. Indeed, indeed. Uh, so we're going to get to all that and more. Look forward to uh, Jason uh, fielding today's TA coming your way in about, say, I don't know, 30, 30 minutes. Yeah, we'll do that 30 minutes. Uh, then, of course, we will get to your chart requests in the, in the other half of the show. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget that D Live chest as well, my dear D Liveians. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get into it. Have a bit of news I want to cover today. First piece comes from Bitcoin.com. Ethereum captures a new all time high. Market cap now surpasses 510 billion. It's a very momentous day, guys. Uh, nine days ago, Bitcoin reached new all time highs, and now the second leading crypto asset, Ethereum, has tapped an all time high. On Friday morning, Ethereum reached a high of $4,416, uh, but since it retreated 2% down. Well, we'll check in on Ethereum in a few minutes. Uh, all right, the rest of this article, of course, is TA and price action, which we'll be covering shortly. I just needed to post this headline first, guys. People are just excited that it's hit all-time highs. I mean, oh. it's hard to argue with the bullishness right now, especially with Ethereum. Ethereum dominance looks amazing. And Indeed. that was something I went over on Tuesday. Like, that never changed. Ethereum looks pretty strong. Yeah, high fives all around, guys. Um, with that said, yeah, all-time highs on Ethereum. Very exciting stuff. But let's continue into the next piece. Uh, this one comes from uh, the block Crypto. 
And it's a piece titled Justin's Son Withdraws Billions of Dollars Worth of Crypto from Aave's Lending Pools. What's up with this? Tron founder Justin Sun withdrawing billions of dollars worth of crypto from DeFi lending platform Aave and its lending pools, according to blockchain data. As a result, this has removed uh, a significant amount of liquidity from the Aave platform. on Aave yesterday. Is this related to that? We will be checking the Ave chart. Uh, this could be next. Some time. would look good with the mullet, man. <laughs> you think so? Like a, like a nice speed mullet, yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it would suit him. Uh, <laughs> let's let's continue. As a result, this has removed a significant amount of liquidity from the platform, triggering much higher interest rates. Withdrawals may be a result of concerns over recent tweets between members of the urine community and those in the Ave camp. During a Twitter standoff, members of the urine community implied Ave was vulnerable to a potential exploit. The urine founder, Andre Krohn, tweeted earlier Friday that Ave is vulnerable to the same exploit as the one that impacted Cream Finance on Wednesday, which is, of course, that flash loan exploit we talked about just, yeah, just on Wednesday, took $130 million worth of tokens. Uh, quote, maybe don't badmouth other projects while sitting on an 11-figure vulnerability, tweeted urine core developer uh, ban Banteg. Banteg later specified that he believed the exploit was very specific, uh, has very specific liquidity requirements and was possible for about 160 days in the past but is not currently viable. Following the disclosures and resulting fallout, Ave founder tweeted that the crypto community should be, should be sticking together, quote, let's work together, support each other, and um, work together most importantly. I see. So, uh, Justin's son, I mean, this seems kind of kind of childish, a little mature, you know, two camps throwing down, talking smack, and, you know, is it really vulnerable to a multi-billion dollar hack, you know? Was it you know, any more so today or, or yesterday? You still had your funds in it, so now you're pulling the money out to kind of flex, you know, flex on one crew, um, and, and I don't know, dunk, dunk on another. It seems seems petty. I don't know. Maybe it's justified, but I don't know. Seems kind of petty to me. But there you go, guys. Wondering what Justin Sun's doing. He's pulling the uh, multi-billion dollar liquidity rug out uh, from under Ave pools. So if you're wondering why prices may be turbulent or interest rates spiking on the platform, billions getting pulled. We'll, we'll follow this story a little closer. Maybe there's more to this. Uh, let's have a look here. Here's a piece Photos.com captures a $500 million CryptoPunk sale. No, it was just wash trading because, of course, it was. Uh, did you guys hear about this yesterday? It was tra trending, the, you know, the highest priced, quote-unquote, NFT sale in history. No, um, which one was it? It wasn't really, it wasn't really real though, so I'll just break, you know, spoiler, it wasn't exactly real, but I'll, I'll read the details here. A wild-haired black lipstick sporting crypto punk apparently sold for more than $500 million worth of Ethereum yesterday, but hey, it was actually just wash trading. The saga of CryptoPunk9998 started on Thursday when somebody transferred the pixelated artwork between Ethereum addresses. Less than two hours later, the punk's new address moved it on again, selling for 124,000 Ethereum, worth about 530 million. All the funds were apparently borrowed primarily from Compound. However, the merry-go-round didn't stop there. The Ethereum spent on the piece was transferred to the seller and then straight back to the buyer to repay the loan used to buy the female punk in the first place. Uh, this then, as if it wasn't suspicious enough, the punk itself was transferred back to its original address. It was promptly put up for sale again for more than a billion dollars. Crypto punk creator Larva Labs addressed the sale on Twitter, pegging it as a flash loan. Quote, this transaction and a number of others are not a bug or an exploit. They're just being done with flash loans, the company tweeted. In a nutshell, someone bought this punk from themselves with borrowed money and repaid the loan in the same transaction. The company also revealed that other large bids have also been made like this, but it said that they're barely valid. Bids like this cannot be accepted. Larva Labs then claimed it would add filters to avoid these types of situations going forward. All right, so basically what this is about, there's a leaderboard, obviously, right? There's a leaderboard of top sales, and what better way to pad your NFTs, yeah. um, you know, record... People think that people want these and that they're worth stuff. If you just keep wash trading them around, people look at that on the ethereum network and be like look how many times this thing has gained value these things are gaining value yeah so somebody like, took a flash kind of a lie <laughs> yeah so somebody took a flash loan which uh, if you guys aren't familiar with flash loans are like uh is a loan that in, in a single transaction you can borrow the money 
use the money and return the money and you can do it um, with l relatively little collateral low collateral um, you know because they can they can they can afford to uh, they can afford the risk of lending you a crazy amount of money with little collateral if you can of course generate a transaction that repays it in the same move so in this case that's exactly what they did I guess they crafted the transaction that you know leveraged up or borrowed a bunch of money from compound um, used it to buy it you know, return the money to themselves and then send it back to to, to the transaction all in one, one go. Um, all to pad the, the sales numbers on the leaderboards. Um, I know it's kind of cheating, but hey, uh, this is That'll flex. Definitely also, I don't know if you guys heard. Let me see here. I think one of the guys, if it was, if it um, probably was this dude uh, who made this record saying setting sale, I think he tweeted, um, uh, who did he, what's his name? Zuckerberg. He tweeted Zuckerberg. And he said something like, yo, Zuckerberg, give it up. You're never going to make it. You know, you, you can't even keep up with my $500 million crypto punk sale or something like that. So he was so on the on the back of the whole Facebook meta launch, which I guess we should cover in the news today. On the back of the Facebook meta launch, um, this guy was kind of also tweeting Zuckerberg. Because if you guys didn't know, yes, Facebook launched their new... Their new they figured out that quick it was wash trading. Didn't he really... Didn't he... Like know that like it's gonna be easily found Pointless out. Like to why call are you taking shots? Uh, it's because everybody on crypto Twitter or on Twitter yesterday was taking shots at Zuckerberg. If you guys didn't uh, hear, the meta? yeah, the meta thing didn't go over that well. I get it. People are cynical. The VR thing doesn't really make sense yet. And so people were basically shitting all over Zuckerberg and Facebook for their plans and their meta launch. I'll get into that in a minute, guys. But there is the story behind the $500 million NFT sale. Let's continue. This next piece is from Cointelegraph. The future of longevity lies with digital currency visionaries. Let's have a look here. Is there anything interesting here? Researchers in collaboration with crypto investors might prove longer and healthier lifespan in an attainable reality. All right, this story is a bit of an op-ed, a bit of a piece here. I don't have too much time to get into this, but I guess uh, I, I, this headline got my attention because it's something Justin and I were talking about on the show yesterday. And just in general, you know, it's about big picture thinking. The world's changing. The social, economic, political structure of civilization seems to be shifting below our feet. And, you know, it's possible that, uh, yes, as investors, as developers and researchers in crypto and all that, you know, we're sculpting sculpting the future in some way. But with that said, let's continue. I'll leave, of course, as always, guys, I leave links to all these stories in the news below. Uh, I can't cover them all. I don't do them all justice. But if you do want to read a little further into topics like the one I just mentioned, the links will be in the description below. Next piece comes from you not today. $181 million worth of Shiba Inu tokens mistakenly appears in a Coinbase account of a NASCAR driver. Hey, Jason, have you ever woken up to find like $180 million with a crypto accidentally deposited into your crypto, your Coinbase account? No, but I did wake up a long time ago, um, fell asleep at my keyboard on TronBet and woke up with 127,000 Tron when I started off with like 6,000. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, quite the uh, snafu. It was pretty funny. Well, I'm glad it worked out <laughs> in the right direction, yeah. but uh, let's have a look here. NASCAR. 181 million, that'd be nice. Uh, NASCAR driver Keith McGee, yes, Keith McGee, good name, woke up to quite a surprise on Thursday, $181 million worth of sheep sitting on his balance in Coinbase. In a tweet, M McGee claims that the money doesn't belong to him, and now he wants to return it. Hey, Coinbase, he tweeted, I woke up to $181 extra million dollars on my account. That doesn't belong to me. I really do want to return it. Uh, while he is yet to hear back from Coinbase, the 40-year-old race car driver from Alaska told uh one outlet that he would keep trying uh, to right or wrong for as long as it takes <laughs> it's like i don't care how long it takes i'm getting the money back man talk about not wanting to sheep eh talk about it's right. like you can't give can't give the stuff away in the hundreds of millions uh mcgee's persistence Persistence to return his accidental sheep fortune is undoubtedly laudable but it's not clear whether he's actually capable of withdrawing the money since this could simply be a display error. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to say whether or not this is even real. You know, June, a man from Georgia who goes by the name of Christopher Williamson made headlines after discovering $1.4 trillion in his Coinbase account. The exorbitant wealth came after he invested $20 in a dubious token called Rocket Bunny. However, Williamson was not able to sell his tokens, which he intended to spend on a mega yacht shaped like a penguin, he said. A few days later, Coinbase explained that it was simply a display error that affected certain ERC-20 tokens. 
Yeah, imagine that, eh? How much of a noob do you have to be to put twenty dollars? Yeah, it's like twenty dollars in the rocket, buddy. <laughs> For some reason, it's worth you know your your twenty dollars worth a trillion, <laughs> and you call that you call their local news outlet to brag. <laughs> you know what? I'm not gonna question it. I'm just gonna go yacht shopping. <laughs> it's like hello, Fox Twelve News Desk. Uh, I'd like to tell you, I just became a trillionaire on the back of Rocket Bunny. Of twenty bucks off Rocket Bunny. <laughs> yes, I could. It's guaranteed. I'm looking at it right here in front of me. <laughs> All right, um, enough enough shenanigans. Let's continue the, this mystery. I'm sure will be solved. Ubisoft, something I love. I always talk about. When are the big studios going to get into blockchain-based gaming? Well, here's a pretty big story breaking today from Coin Telegraph. Ubisoft will seek to invest in and create blockchain games. Uh, the firm is backing Andy Mocha, Andy Mocha Brands, creator of, po of popular metaverse game, The Sandbox. Oh, very interesting, Ubisoft. I think Alex is in Sandbox. Yeah, Sandbox is huge. It's the next big one next to Mana, which we'll get into in a minute as well. Ubisoft, one of the world's largest video game companies responsible for creating popular franchises such as Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, For Honor, hosted its Q2 earnings call this week where blockchain was a key topic of discussion alongside reporting a 15% increase in the active players. For the first half of the year, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla has become the second most profitable game in the company's history. The, fin the French firm CEO, Mr. Ye Goumont, also expressed intentions uh, for investment and adoption of blockchain game-centric games and companies on their platform, despite making notable advancements in the space, such as the funding of... Animoca Brands, owner of the Ethereum-based metaverse game Sandbox, Guillemot said that the platform is in its early research and development stages. Oh yes, Ubisoft, of course, uh, Ubisoft became a validator node on the Tezos network back in April, and a channel node offer operator on Alf.im network in July, and a founding member of a blockchain game alliance, a coalition to encourage the adoption of the two sectors. Chief of Financial Officer Ubisoft spoke highly of the potential impacts of blockchain gaming in the call, stating blockchain will be will enable more play to earn that will enable more players to actually earn content, own content, and we think it's going to grow the industry quite a bit. We've been working with a lot of small companies going on to blockchain, and we're starting to have good know-how on how it can impact the industry, and we want to become one of the key players here, once again, said the CFO of Ubisoft. Uh, all right, not much more to add on this except great development is good to see. It's really important that these studios that have like you know multi million, tens of millions of dollar budgets for their gaming titles, um, these are the type of um, players I would love to see enter the space and, uh, and build be good on it. For NFTs as well, especially in game metaverse uh, like NFTs, like because if they're building these games on blockchain, there's going to be a lot of interoperability, right? Yep. That's exactly so, the point. Like, that's like it's going to be huge, I think, for gaming. And yes, I think people there's going to be a lot of people who like get into these games and stuff early that make quite a bit of money, and, and people don't even realize it. I think a lot of children are going to make a lot of money that their parents are going to be shocked by. It. <laughs> that's going to be very difficult to navigate, of course. Uh, but indeed, that seems to be the future we're heading into, and it's cool because they are um, they are seem to be supporters or like early early adopters or what did it say here? Maybe investors of some kind. Either way, they're involved in the sandbox, right? Um, yeah. So you could see a future, guys, where you know the swag that you're earning in Assassin's Creed, your cool loot that you're unlocking in Far Cry and all the other properties of you, you know, uh, Splinter Cell. That's another game of Ubisoft. I can think of, you know, those games. Um, you know, the loot you unlock in there might instantly be, tra you know, be uh, appear in your on-chain wallet and also be uh, loot that you can use in yeah. something like the sandbox, right? That would be the future, and it could be here sooner than we think. I think that's super cool. I can't wait for. Uh, you know, people from the gaming world to really start to embrace crypto because these things haven't really crossed over yet. I think, yet. It's, long, but I think it's like the next like boom. All right, 1:30. Um, we started 10 minutes late though, so let's let's indulge the news for another 10 minutes, guys. Let's kick it. News. Yes, sir. Crypto lending firms on the hot seat. New regulations are coming. A piece from Coin Telegraph. The sheer amount of money invested in the crypto space is causing regulatory dialogue to occur at a frantic pace as regulators struggle to keep up. Uh, a number of states in the U.S., including Kentucky, Texas, Alabama, Vermont, New Jersey, and most recently New York, have been cracking down on crypto lending. This, depending on one's perspective, 
These can add, uh, these can amount to acts of collective desperation or a four token of things to come. All right, nice, interesting op-ed piece here. I don't have the time to get too far into it, but of course we have a couple examples being mentioned, uh, like the clampdown on crypto firms. We've been talking about this for weeks and months now, guys. BlockFi in Celsius, big, big crackdown across certain U.S. states. Uh, let's see here. Senior lecturer of law in the University of Liverpool told Cointelegraph, quote, the crypto regulatory space is getting increasingly heated, and not only in the U.S., but also in the rest of the world, adding that new regulatory approach is emerging, and as such, quote, the crypto market will no longer be an example of a free market regulated, regulated purely by the invisible hand of the market. Define stable coins rather than the exchange of or store of value coins such as Bitcoin or Ethereum will be the key targets of emerging regulation. Yeah, you know what, guys? And this is again something we talk about all the time here. Uh, something like uh, Bitcoin isn't necessarily a threat to the to the fiat game, uh, whereas uh, you know DeFi, DeFi, stable coins. Uh, you're talking about uh, fiat money, savings and loan based off said fiat money. This is the racket that you know the banks are into, and yep. you know you're stepping on some serious toes here, uh, playing playing it with these types of tools. Uh, you know, so this is why I'm quite secure and happy in my Bitcoin bags. And as much as I love to take on riskier DeFi plays that have you know massive gains, Aave's done great. Uh, comps gone done great. A lot of these, a lot of these uh, DeFi protocols have done great, but I wonder, are they going to be in trouble inevitably? This article, it's a rather lengthy one. I encourage you to explore it. It does, um, does kind of tackle this question of these DeFi and these lending protocols, and are they, uh, are there any fresh regulations preparing to come for them? Do check this piece out if you're into DeFi. All right, one more article at least. Let's get into this one from also Coin Telegraph. Axie Infinity, Decentraland, and Metaverse cryptos rally hard after Facebook rebrands to Meta. Uh, Facebook's decision. And this big debut happened yesterday, guys. I don't know if anybody's seen it. I might even play it here on the air. Rebranded itself to Meta, and it indicates plans to build an avatar-filled metaverse. And it helped spark a speculative rally across cryptocurrencies that belong to similar virtual world products. The central end, a virtual place with its own economy, the currency Mana, and social events are accessible to anyone with a web browser, saw its market valuation explode for about $1.4 billion to about $2.08 billion in the past 24 hours. Yeah, so it basically pumped uh, like 40, 40% overnight. It's pretty impressive. Let's see here. This happened as its native token mana jumped by about, yeah, 45%. Uh, let's see here. At its intraday best, the central line. All right, so this is getting to more. Da, 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 da. Traders started rushing into the central line market after assessing Facebook's foray to the virtual, virtual world sector. Company CEO Mark Zuckerberg said that from now on, the metaverse first, not Facebook first, following the latest rebranding. All right, so all things at Facebook are now metaverse first. Uh, let's see here. Co-founder, CEO of... Sorry, say again. Said Metaverse first. Yep. Um, let's go Metaverse. Uh, Co-founder, Chief Operating Officer of music startup uh, Corit, told Coin Telegraph that Meta poses extreme upside opportunities for the still emerging NFT space. This is how I feel about yep. it. Calling it a highly liquid venture. It is highly liquid. Uh, in the video, I'll maybe I'll show it. Zuckerberg talks about they're willing to throw billions in this, even if it's at a loss in the coming years, to secure market share in this coming Ready Player One reality. Uh, calling it a highly liquid venture. Uh, uh, this was, was stressed that Meta would eventually collaborate with existing NFT projects in the space, which would help create the crypto sector on the whole to come into the mainstream, adding we can expect unique NFT and Metaverse innovations tailored to Meta in the coming months. Axie Infinity, a Pokemon-style play-to-earn pet training game and virtual world. Also, size market uh, jump about 10%. Uh, let's see here. Axie's native token also took off. Blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, guys, if you're wondering why the likes of Mana, Axie were lifting yesterday, well, maybe you didn't catch the uh, the big Facebook announcement. Maybe I'll get into that in just a minute. One more piece here. SEC Chair, uh, Chair Gary Gensler's War on Crypto is about his resume. Interesting. Uh, let's see here. This piece from Forbes reads, SEC Commissioner... 
Gary Gensler's crusade against cryptos has surprised many. His three-year stint as senior advisor over at MIT on the topic of digital currency uh, before leading the SEC suggests that he would bring an enlightened approach to crypto. No such luck. Gensler's foray into crypto appears to be a more professional resume builder than a coherent regulatory vision for innovation that can democratize finance along the way. He's been happy to play along with the SEC's word games on whether crypto is a currency or security as long as it moves him onto the center stage. It's part of a DC playbook. The regulatory white knight confirmed on the premise to make things right, implements some industry-friendly policy, marketing as pro-consumer, and then takes the next plum job. All right, so this is kind of a cynical read of Gary Gensler's stint as SEC chair. Probably right, to be honest. Um, again, a longer Forbes piece on S uh, what Gensler has really done. And yeah, I remember when Gensler was first appointed, things were looking sunny. Things were like, oh yeah, this man is a is a is an appointee. This is going to signal for maybe a progressive approach to crypto regulation in the United States. No such luck, Gensler. You know, like this article kind of talks about. Um, it's about it's about uh, it's about setting up for the next plum job. It's about uh, you know um, making your masters happy, getting a pat on the head, and getting the next sweet deal in D.C. or some other lobbying position. With that said, guys. Um, here is a one last piece. I know I do an overindulge in the news sometimes, but bear with me. TradingView blog has a piece titled DeFi is coming. Even more DeFi tokens are now available on TradingView. All right. So nice little announcement from TradingView and that this year is coming to an end, but our desire to provide our users with new data is infinite. Say hello to the latest data from DeFi exchanges, PancakeSwap, SpookySwap, and Pangolin. 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 It's Pangolin. That's correct. Uh, from the world of decentralized finance right to your devices, TradingView is now bringing all your favorite shit coins and all your favorite shit coin dexes to your fingertips. All right, guys. There you go. TradingView launching that. And here's a tweet. FATF published its recommendations. It's so bad that it makes the infrastructure bill look reasonable. TLDR. Only permission DeFi is allowed. An intermediary must be inserted to serve as a WASP. Or VASP, I should say, virtual asset service provider. The global impact of these recommendations is an attempted kill shot at DeFi. Wow, here's a very interesting Twitter thread worth looking at. Pretty much capturing much of our thoughts today. Um, I guess there's new FATF rules or, pub or recommendations being published today, guys. And it's about what I have been forewarning. Only permission DeFi would be allowed. I mean, this is going to set us down for one hell of a showdown because it's not exactly easy to enforce such things. But, um, guys, it goes to show you DeFi. Several takes today reflect less concern because they're not focused on DeFi in particular. But looking at DeFi, it's clear that the implications are brutal. They start to look okay, and then it gets worse from here. Here is the link to it, FATF. I will leave this link as well as the link to this Twitter thread below. This user... Seems to have a complete Twitter thread breaking down the details, the TLDR of the implications. It's brutal, guys. They're coming after us. You better duck and cover. And I don't know. They, uh, it's hide the wire. It's exactly that time. Get in, you know, hide your BTC bags. All right. With that said, guys, thank you so much for bearing with me today. Uh, let me see here. I'm going to try to pull something up, though. I'm going to pull up um, Meta. Facebook changed its name. Da, 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 da. Everything revealed. I'm going to leave the link to this video as well. Um, I hope I don't get copyright struck. I shouldn't if I um, if I speak over majority of this video. But again, I'm not going to play the whole video. Uh, I will leave the link in the description below. Or heck, I might just drop it right now into the chat. Watching Zuckerberg act is so cringeworthy to me it's pretty bad um all right with that said guys so facebook Everyone revealed facebook revealed their rebrand so and what we hope to build give you a sneak peek for those of you who haven't seen it that starting today our company is now meta now meta no i'm here i'm just playing the video yeah actually you might not hear um but i'm playing the video first so, so we're listening to, to mark okay yeah, yeah right i now. won't hear it uh, yeah so just bear with me um about bringing people together Brand. all right so they're still bringing people together and so here they show off something if you've used an oculus quest device before um this is your new home this is your vr home right so you're going to put on your your device and you're going to find yourself in your new vr environment 
and this is where the NFTs come in. So in your house, what are you going to do? You're going to decorate it with all your favorite digital swag, right? So here he's strolling through the crib, and all these goodies, all these decorations are... You're going to have a bunch of mannequin heads in there, huh? Yeah, it's going to be all mannequins all the time. <laughs> it looks like a serial killer. So this thing's really cheesy. He got panned pretty hard. They got panned pretty hard on social media uh, over this. Um, so you can see here, you know, this is also going to be the future. You're going to have your avatars wearing custom gear, right? So these are all probably going to be NFT powered outfits. All right. So, I mean, this is it. This is your life, guys. This is you and your friends hanging out now. You're not, uh, this is what your you life. Just put on your goggles and let your body go to shit. Um, I mean, you're going to be permanently stuck in that pod, right? So yeah. pod living is might, ra mighty spacious once you put the VR goggles on. So this is super cheesy, guys. They show off all the games you can play, how you can, how you're gonna interact with people. Then they show AR, right? If you guys aren't familiar, there's VR and then there's AR, augmented reality. So I guess they expect you to wear these stupid goggles outside with you. You're gonna be walking around in the real world, and you know, um, I guess NFT-based um, art and things will appear in the real world. Well, I mean, they do things like this already, like AR. They do through with, phones. Like, you'd hold up your your phone and look at the wall through your phone in the camera and then it can come to life or whatever Precisely. Reality. Yeah, you don't necessarily need to be walking around with an oculus on um well no but that's the intention here right that the, these are um these uh these headsets are going to be what's known as mixed reality all right so it's not just you're not just looking through a screen but they're also projecting your um i'll quickly show you here um the idea is so that uh, everyone's it, it, gonna be wearing black black rimmed glasses with batteries in them. Yes. So in this case, uh, so they talk about the future. They see the future of uh, workplace, the workplace environment, the office environment. People are gonna be working from home, and um, your new office will be a VR one, right? So you put your glasses, and this is functionality that already exists within the Oculus device. If you've used one, you can map out your actual desk in front of you. Um, and then like all your work stuff, all your cubicle workflow is presented in front of you. Guys, I'm not even sure if this is actually going to catch on, but this is the big thinking. This is the big thinking. They actually think people think are going to live. I think, I think they made a good point about working from home because I do believe that that is going to be a much more common thing now. The, the pandemic has forced people to work from home and now employers are also realizing that they actually get a little bit more done in their uh, time quality ma management and stuff like that. Like, there's a lot of businesses who are realizing that we don't need a brick and mortar place anymore, and I think that'll it'll be a big shift. Yeah, and what Facebook is pitching here is that you know you and your whole office, your whole team, um, can be can have headsets on and collaborate, you know, VR together. Uh, that's the rough idea, at least, right? Well, then this will come to pass. Discord, just not in an augmented reality or anything, right? Precisely. Um, so he talks about uh, they're willing to spend billions of dollars, um, even if it's it's losing, uh, supporting it. Um, they also talk about here, they talk about how, um, you know, a lot of people don't like Facebook. They, he knows that. He acknowledges that a lot of people are not Facebook users. And the last thing they want to do is, like, connect their metaverse experience to their social media account or their workplace to their social media account. And so he acknowledges that. And he says that they're taking a new direction now as a company. And they're going to be open. They're going to have, like, a much more open, I think, framework what translation web three guys translation web, web three zeno uh hold on. did we flip oh you went live that's why okay uh web three which is basically the metaverse which is basically your one wallet that can connect to multiple services and so uh, also mentions that too which is very cool um so they're embracing that it's going to be a much more open framework um you know hand tracking there's a lot of stuff here guys i will leave the link below really advanced stuff uh very cool what they can do including um full body tracking um without the need for extra so i don't know i'm not gonna bore you all the details enough said we got to get into the next segment thank you everybody for bearing with us let's go ahead and get into the uh bubbles what's going on in the bubble space let's get into it once again links will be in the description below all right, excellent day for mana, mana, mana. I already mentioned it during the news. It's up 47%. Massive day for mana on the back of this decentraland or man, meta news yeah. off of Facebook. Mana meta. is decentraland. Yes, the mana is decentraland. The meta news, the, the, the centraland news, the metaverse news, all mana, these meta, terms meta, are just scrambling my brain today. Safe moon. <laughs> safe moon. Apparently, it is moon. safe out here on the moon, and it is mooning. Yes, up 47%. Giant day 
for safe moon the bull market proceeds unabated axs yes one of the beneficiaries apparently of the pump or the the meta news axi axs up 21 percent uh bat basic attention token up 21 percent t fuel up nine percent all right t fuels in oh, well, the single digit up there in the bubbles so that's good to see mm-hmm I remember when T Fuel and uh, Theta were all the rage. Uh, yeah. CRO, CRO having another day. CRO's on a bit of a run lately. CRO's at 22 cents. It's up another 10% today. Great stuff over there. BitDAO, BitDAO up 14%. Nice day for BitDAO. Shout out to Jason. He grabbed himself a bag, I think, on the BitDAO lunch on yep. Bybit on Chili's. Bybit. Chili's CHZ up 12%, Rune up a little over 11%, and a smattering of other coins up single digits today. Uh, Nary a loser in the house. Doge is giving back a little bit. Doge had a big day yesterday. I think Doge had like a 30% day yesterday. It's giving back about 12% currently. And Hex, I guess, is continuing its bleed. Hex is one of the big losers today. Hex is down nearly 14%. All right, there is your look at the bubbles guys let's go ahead and get into the live chat who's kicking it with us this thursday afternoon all right let me just expand out the chat window maybe i ought to fix this the wrong bubble is blinking it might be distracting oh, yeah, some people it. might be distracting some people bear with me one second my dear homies and there we go. All right, that's a little better. Back to the live chat, shall we? Here we go. All right, that'll do. That shall do. Um, what do we got here? Mr. Ether, Robert Warner, first in the chat. Big shout outs to you, Mr. Ether. David Rice, happy Friday, y'all. Hope you all learned it's now. Oh, l learned it now. It's let's earn it. Yes, I hope you've learned. Now it's time to earn. Uh, Mr. Ether, ETH, ETH Moon. Indeed, it is ETH Moon, the big ETH Moon of October. A, you know, uh, a week, weekly close. Okay. I will never forget. Uh, let's continue. What do we got next? Um, Litecoin feels good. Does it? Feels good. All right, but not as good as ETH. I certainly believe it. Why? Litecoin do good things today. We'll check in on that in a few minutes. Dixie, yes, Dixie doing things. Evening, fellas. Hope you all well. We're doing good. Thank you, Philly Carr. Philly Carr, yeah, big Philly Carr with us today. Hey, Philly, where were you yesterday? J Justin was on the stream. We missed you, buddy. Would have been, would have felt uh, right at home with Philly in the chat with Justin's appearance yesterday. Mm -hmm. Splashy85 on Twitch. Evening, everybody. Big shout-outs to Splashy. Uh, Adam on YouTube. Big shout-outs to you. David Rice on DLive. Light it up. Big shout-outs to David Rice. Franklin MC. I'm hearing Alex. I don't think you are. You're hearing Jason. And Jason... Yeah, indeed. Jason has a new mic. Maybe that's why you find him sounding so heavenly. Uh, Mr. Ether, Robert Warner, what is it with these damn shit points pumping? Prices are too damn high. All right, Adam, it's crypto. Exactly. Crypto Bull 21, front running the bulls. Uh, Adam, fundamentals don't matter for most of these coins. No, they certainly don't. So it's, the, it's the age of the memes. We live in mimetic warfare and the doggies... The doggies are at the top of the heap. Uh, let's see here. Uh, fun, yep. Isaiah, Isaiah joined us on DLive. Big shout-outs to you. Funny Mummy on funny money funny money on d live what's the green red indicator on the trading view chart called um which one are you talking about you're talking about my baseline indicator top the one on my candles you're talking about the wada attacks I'll, I'll just name all three of them how about i do that the three indicators you see being used here on my trading view chart are uh baseline cc baseline this is our baseline indicator uh, the second one down here, this is Wada Atar. Uh, this is a, vol a volatility filter type indicator. And this one here, Minx. Minx is my oscillator. This is also a CC indicator. If you go to um, Trading View and you go to the indicators section and you type in keyword cracking, guess what comes up? All our indicators, yes, our full suite. Some free, some locked. You need to be a premium member to get access to them. But keyword cracking, guys you a preview of all our indicators back back to the live chat shout outs to funny mummy 
Money or Mummy, doesn't matter. Tenacious V, good to be back again. Big shout outs to Tenacious V on YouTube. Uh, Adam, on the daily, Bitcoin's breaking out of a bull flag. We'll be checking in on that Bitcoin bull flag in a minute. Uh, Adam, on the four hour, looks more like a falling wedge. Yes, from wedges to flags, we got them all. Adam, I saw I read a post about the one big wick. Apparently, whales sell their futures, which lower spot price, and then they buy spot cheap. An interesting theory. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Nick Nixon Nixon. Uh, how is Shiba Inu doing? Shiba? Is this a different Shiba with a P? Is this a, or did you just misspell Shiba? We'll check in on Sheep. Crypto Bull 21. Why is that news? Washing money. Yes, it's something. Nothing too new. Isaiah, does anybody know a trustworthy Ethereum wallet? What do you? Oh, a, a wallet. Well. I mean, yeah. MetaMask, and if you want uh, more security, uh, use a, a, a ledger, or you can connect your ledger device to a MetaMask. That works pretty good. David Rice, uh, let's see here, it's stored on my wallet. Yeah, that's what I thought, uh, David Rice, when he asked, does anybody know of a trustworthy Ethereum wallet? I have an address you can trust. Um, Mine. I'll post it. Yeah, exactly. I'll post my address. And we, uh, I'll, I'll keep it safe. I'm very, I'm very trustworthy. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, Alex is with us in the chat. Safe moon. Pay no attention to me. I'm just here to chill. Well, shout outs to Alex, kicking it with us in the live chat. Crypto Bull I'll 21. Take a look at the moon phases. Not something I ever look at, but I'll definitely look at it. No kidding. Polly B is with us. Big shout out to Polly B on D Live. Mike Maker. I mean, the meta launch correlates with crypto, which certainly does. Mike Maker. In other words, uh, great yeah. news. I mean, gonna yeah. be big for all of those like i i'm i'm personally happy to see it because it it gives so much utility to all the stuff that we already do right mm -hmm. it's true and and more eyes more money more more volume man like and it and it'll answer like this question you know a lot of normies minds it's like why would i pay money for a jpeg well you know once you're living your life out in the metaverse and you digital mansion to fucking stock here yeah, because you know you start you start you start you start from the bottom in the metaverse with like a potato sack, I guess, for your avatar's um, <laughs> outfit. Yep. You start from the bottom, get the potato sack, and then one day you start wearing Gucci I'm and Prada. Nine, baby. Got the I got the digital Gucci. Yeah, I got the Balenciaga, you know, gear, ten thousand, ten thousand, uh, an outfit uh, on on chain. Yeah, that's that's what I'm and talking that's, about. That's that's something that they're trying to do with your icons, right? Um, in the sense that like whatever that uh, NFT has, it's wearing like in the metaverse, you'd be able to wear those types of like the hats and the yes. glasses. And the loosely, yes, that's kind of what we're yeah. looking to do. Yep. Nice. Um, with that said, let's continue, guys. A couple more comments. We're getting into the next segment. Thanks everybody kicking it with us today. We have to go a little overtime today as well. Having trouble staying on. Uh, 70 over 100 greed says any word. Shout outs to you. Polly B. Ave worth staying in now that I've taken good profit. We'll check in on Ave. I'll add your request in a minute. Verk on YouTube. You think she will play out today? Uh, we'll hang tight. I'll get into that in a bit. Short Bus Crusader. A turd is still a turd any way you rebrand it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's Facebook. Yeah, it's turd. Facebook is a massive, massive business. Sure and, and it just. I don't necessarily see it going away anytime soon. Do you know how popular? I mean, I don't necessarily. I, uh, I guess I kind of still use a little bit of Facebook. I don't actually use it that often I myself. Check. I don't post. I don't do much on I'm there. I'm not big into social media, man. Their marketplace is huge. It's the marketplace is really taking over the local listing hustle. Um, uh, my, my lady's actually sold quite a bit of stuff on there. I know. So. Yep. Same. same. Seems quick and yeah. easy. A lot of people using it, so it goes to show you Facebook, like it or hate it, uh, a lot of. The normie people, I think, are on there, right? So mm -hmm. people don't use Reddit or Discords or Twitters, etc. Where do you think they spend their internet time? Facebook. All right, let's continue. Hate it or not, that's Facebook for you. No, not the Zuckbot. <laughs> yes, the Zuck, Zuckbot um, PolyB is here. Uh, you will have nothing and be happy. Indeed, precisely. This is exactly it. Um, you're going to live mm -hmm. in a in squalor. Uh, but your world. But your uh, you know, but you put your VR glasses on. You're gonna have a sweet crib, and all your you're gonna have some dope. Yeah, dope honey's swag. knocking on your meta door. <laughs> oh God, it's it's. It, I, Are I, you sitting there with your whitey tidies and no pants, with eating baked beans out of a can? Yeah, basically, it's it's sad. It's sad what humanity will be reduced to. I for one welcome our destruction. Uh, let's see here, Jesus. Polly B, all his spare heads. Yes, Philly car back to the real world. Con is closing robustly just now. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Oh, he's so creepy. Yes, Zuckerberg, the famous. Half human, half android. 
Have you guys um, ever seen him drink water? Uh, there was a there was a video of him drinking water at like the Senate hearing or whatever, and he's a fucking robot. There's no way around it. No one drinks water like that. His uh his his the humans that the, the constructed this machine did not program the the water like the water all drinking. is Borg. Uh, let's see here. This is our way of life now. Very sad that most people do not see the point. Yes, I agree. This is the way our life is heading into the Ready Player well, One I mean, universe. That's why we are where we are because we are early adopters and we see kind of the future of tech and stuff like that. Like I think that all of us are here because we have that kind of inclination to uh, seek out future technologies and stuff. And I mean, how we've been doing this for years now, talking about these things as they develop and. It's kind of cool to see it all really coming to fruition. I mean, Facebook changed their goddamn name to Meta. This is for real. Indeed. Um, this is... The, it's it's the Ready Player One future, guys. Like, the, the world is shifting quickly, and technology is increasing at a crazy pace, and I guess uh, the, the likes, the big corporate techs like uh, Zuckerberg and Facebook, they're like, no, 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 that Ready Player One universe you've seen in the movies, no, that's coming. That's coming to humanity in probably 10 years' time. I mean, when you got Elon talking about inserting brain chips into people, how long before you know we are living in a full-out Matrix reality? Uh, maybe, you know, this meta thing seems goofy right now. We're all making fun of it, but, you know, laugh now, but in 10 years, we're all no, going to... I think that, like... He's not a dumb person. No, I, I'm I mean, personally not, but I'm just kind of reporting on what people say. And I get it. I really do. I understand why people are cynical on this. I know why people think uh -huh. NFTs are funny and that why would you pay money for JPEG? Like, you know, again, it's the same thing. It's the same thread that we've heard for years. What? Digital money? That sounds shady. That sounds scam. These currencies, that's all shady. That's, you know, But, you know, it takes a while for people to realize, whoa, these things are legit. They have a functionality. They have a certain purpose. They solve something that other tech couldn't. And that's where we're living, guys. All right, we've got a full hour for an intro. I thank you guys so much for hanging in there. Big shout-outs to everybody with us today. Uh, if I couldn't mention every last comment, well, you are nonetheless in my heart. With that said, we're getting into the next segment, guys. We have TA brought to you by Jason coming up next. i got to recover all of your requests. So let's go ahead and get into it, guys. Jumping into the main scene and now. All right, I gotta fix quite a few broken on-screen elements here, but in the meantime, uh, Jason is successfully on screen. You are on screen, and bear with me, guys. All right, you're on screen, and we are looking at uh, BTC 24-hour chart on Bybit. Yeah, baby. All right, we're gonna be. All right, well, let's have some fun. Yes, we certainly so, will. Getting into Bitcoin here on the daily, um, we do have some nice bullish price action to the upside here. Um, it's, it, you can see how tight this is and it's been chopping me up lately. We've got a continuation signal next to a short signal next to a long signal. So I did end up fortunately taking this because I couldn't be scared out just because of my thoughts and got closed it out right here at the baseline. Good thing we did. Um, interesting to see uh, this price action with relatively no momentum um water is actually still negative here we're not even close to the the dead zone i'm getting a crossover on time transformation giving us a little bit of bullish divergence here which is good to see but uh as for bitcoin i don't think that the strength is here to be able to take this trade something will definitely have to change by the end of the day um but i i'm comfortable with that because i do think that the play here is going to end up being ethereum because ethereum just looks so much stronger right now getting over into dominance uh, dominance kind of waning here coming down to uh, test this historical uh, support here we don't know whether this is going to end up uh, I think a close below this 100 EMA is going to likely let that bleed out a little bit more and I think that makes some sense when we come over to look at ethereum ended up taking the ethereum long on this bullish engulfing candle yesterday just completely uh, overtook everything and the highest close ethereum has ever had so I had to take that long, getting continuation out of that today. I'm going to post another continuation at all-time highs. So I really do believe that Ethereum is going to be the play over the weekend here. Um, and it's also important to notice, uh, note that we have a lot of monthly, two-monthly uh, closes coming here. And there's a lot of different things that uh, could happen over the weekend. Um, Justin did point out uh, yesterday that um, when I was calling this a shooting star, uh, pattern. Um, it's not, it was basically me saying that it's the, it has a possibility to play out. Of course, it needs two candles, but
But um, this this is still a, a setup that could end up being that. Or uh, if we get that monthly close, I think that we'd likely get continuation out of this. But as for strength right now, um, it seems to be in Ethereum. On the four hour coming down on Bitcoin, do have a nice trend break here that we're seeing. I'm getting some continuation. Lower time frame. Watt is there. This continuation on Bitcoin looks pretty strong. You don't even need to have that water confirmation, but uh, everything is kind of firing here for another continuation long on the four hour. You might see yourself get a little baseline bounce here down to that 61.5 range before. But um, like I said, I can't get into a long here if the water is not going to give it to me. And hopefully that's the right decision because with the, the strength that we're seeing out of ETH, I mean, look at ETH on every time frame, man. The weekly just looking super bullish and if we go over to eth dominance i think it's very clear that um we're building an ascending triangle here that's getting damn close to breaking out i'm um, giving a full long signal on the weekly here for uh, eth i think eth looks super strong and it's going to be the, the thing that you want to be looking at right now i'm um, getting in over into other things a defi Looking strong, but still at resistance. Got a continuation at a DeFi perp here yesterday, um, which would still be in profit. Looking good there. Dragon perp, um, kind of looking the same. Still stuck under resistance, but for all intents and purposes, these are very uh, strong charts for now. Um, no weakness as of now, so um, I think you can expect uh, price appreciation out of a lot of the alts that you're seeing as well uh, as Bitcoin dominance falls. Uh, I, ETH dominance is definitely going to rise, but uh, as it falls, uh, there's probably likely going to be some people uh, getting into alts as well. Um, everything kind of looking the exact same as for your altcoin. So uh, positioned bullishly, uh, I don't hate these. Uh, to me, they kind of look like little bull pennants. That uh, we just kind of need to see that break. Uh, we're seeing that of ETH now. So hopefully we get a large extension out of ETH and maybe uh, over the weekend, hopefully a high close by Sunday. Um, then we can really kind of get into bull market mode here. Uh, I don't want to be faked out by by the end of the last day, right? Because uh, on the, those monthly closes, they'll be important. If they close well above their uh, historical resistances, then I think it's game on to go into price discovery on a lot of these assets, which is super exciting. Um, taking a look over here at gold, gold kind of, uh, it, it does seem to be regaining this support, but nothing to really do here as of now. Um, unless you get some kind of, it, it today actually could end up being a good long signal if we get a little bit more momentum out of a, a gold here, but it doesn't appear that it's going to happen by the end of the day. Just kind of languishing sideways, did break this downtrend, holding it as support. So this could be good for gold. We'll have to keep an eye on it for next week. Oh, sorry. This is the weekly. Getting over here to gold. Okay, on the daily. Kind of going, just kind of languishing sideways. Um, interesting to to see um, the weekly starting to give that long signal. But um, holding support on gold, so uh, just keep an eye on it. And I think once we start breaking back above these uh, EMAs, we'll get that long signal. And gold's going to be a, a good trade here. Silver, just kind of languishing sideways here. Um, nothing to really do as of now. Not getting any short signals holding above your uh, EMAs. Coming down to test this historical level of support here. Could just go sideways. Nothing quite to do here with uh, silver as of now. Interestingly enough, um, getting some positive days out of the traditional markets in conjunction with the way that the Dixie's looking. This kind of shocked me today. Uh, yesterday I was pretty excited to see this dump on the Dixie just because what it means for traditionals as well as, um, the crypto space as a whole. And we started to see that price, uh, appreciation to the upside, especially with Bitcoin and Ethereum. But, uh, today we're just getting a huge bullish and engulfing candle off of the, uh, the Dixie right at monthly close, man. So we only got four hours till, uh, this, but this could end up, uh, closing uh, a hanging man candle or i'm just not sure yet but this does uh kind of worry me a little bit in the sense that like it's quite the uh, bullish engulfing on the daily 
but it could easily get sold into. So we'll just have to see on the Dixie, but uh, the traditionals seem to be, uh, uh, looks like the Spy made a new all-time high today. Hard to argue with, QQQ, all-time high today. Uh, Dow Jones a little bit lower, but um, still getting uh, some appreciation to the upside. So it's hard to argue with how bullish everything is right now, but the Dixie does leave me a little bit of pause. So I think the important thing here is to be looking for the stronger assets, which I do believe right now is Ethereum, and limiting your risk to other things before that monthly closes. But if we close that monthly uh, above historical resistance, then I really do think it's game on for the crypto market, and it's going to be exciting uh, next couple months. But other than that, that's kind of my general thoughts on the market right now. Go Ethereum. Uh, Bitcoin's breaking trends on lower time frames, but on higher time frames, the momentum's not there. Uh, something that I wanted to point out here that reminds me of a pattern that we got back in right here. Yeah, right here. So this kind of... Uh, descending wedge that we got here back when we had that run all the way up to 42 and then dipped all the way back down to 30. Um, this sometimes like the patterns don't play out in the exact same pattern and I could easily see this pattern. So like you see here how we got this big dump off of here like almost immediately with that pullback that gave you like the price uh, getting back up to that uh, this level of support turn resistance right here you see this wick all the way up we haven't quite got that wick up here on this pattern and we didn't get that sell off all the way down here so i really wouldn't be surprised if bitcoin comes up here tests this level of around that sixty-four thousand, and then kind of dips back down to test this range that 50 to 48 to 52 range kind of get that descending channel all the way down and then we get uh, the price to pick back up and then really go for those highs again like we did right here. Uh, that wouldn't shock me at all, um, but I, I would love to be wrong and Bitcoin just blow right through here. I'm sick of being bearish um, in the sense that like I'm looking for the weaknesses and I, I hope that it just blows above, closes, no weakness and just game on. But uh, as for now, like I always like to have that little bit in me that's like, okay, well, these things usually don't just blow up right away. They usually go sideways or do something like that. And I think with ETH dominance and Bitcoin dominance likely to fall, we could see some sideways action on Bitcoin that just kind of takes us down to test these levels and then boom, pop off to the show. So we'll see here. But um, like I said, just kind of got to wait for that monthly close to really know what's going to what what's to be expected but i'm excited man um the, the market's finally getting me bullish and usually that's a bad thing because i wait long enough to flip right at the wrong moment but uh we'll things see are looking things are looking super good dude we're on our way to uh the glory the the end of year 100k bitcoin type glory yes the bull market never never doubt the bitcoin uh and it's very fortuitous cycles. All right, with that said, we're going to get into the request line now, guys. We are running a little late, but we don't have too many requests, so we should be able to get everything knocked out in the next 20 minutes, let's say. Let's do it, shall we? Let's get into it. Uh, let's hide this and put the first request of the day up on the board. What do we have here? Bear with me one second. All right, here we go. This is it. Comes from uh, Nix, Nixon Nixon on YouTube. How is Shiba Inu doing? All right, a look at Sheeb because we also had another user requesting Sheeb as well. Let me see. Let's look at Sheeb. Oh, Sheeb. I mean, there's just nothing you can do with it here. It is building some uh, interesting. I think you should actually watch this trend as well, but. Um... You're getting wicks to the downside here. There's just nothing you can do. An exit signal actually on time transformation today, which I think if you've been in it from here, take some goddamn profit. Like, you just, don't look a gift horse in the mouse. This thing isn't just going to fly up to a cent. I mean, yes, it's had some great appreciation here. What is this? Total of 1,100% uh, gains on Shiba in the last, what, two weeks? So, I mean, don't... I mean... 
it's it's hard to tell people to exit, right? But like you're getting exit signals here. I think that you'll likely go sideways here to come down and test some things. Uh, but then again, it's a meme coin, man. Uh, oscillators and stuff like that can't really give you the the information that you need when these memes just go, man. Like it's just everything's so overextended so quickly. But Sheeb, I think it's still bullish here. You're still above, well above um, some your baselines. I think that you're likely to come down here and test. Um, so you'll likely get some sideways action out of Sheba. Watch this uh, higher time frame trend here. I think that it's likely to go sideways and end up testing somewhere between that 49 and 6,000 range. Uh, then again, it's a meme. So it could just dump all the way back down. But things are bullish right now, so I'm not going to even think about that uh, narrative until the evidence shows itself. But as for now, if you're following traditional ways of trading and systematic ways of trading, oscillators are telling you to get out of Sheeb right now. All right. Well, certainly book your profits, guys. Sheeb has been quite the run. Um, I wouldn't underestimate these doggies for sure. The, these memes seem to melt faces, but always be prudent. Take your profits. Yeah, I mean, and this is something like my brother has been texting me about Sheeb. He's like, hey, is this about to go up again? Is this about... And I, I get the excitement and I get all of that, but it's just so hard, especially when you do what we do here. Yes, it could be one of those things that just takes off and is ridiculous, but you just can't, like, with a Yeah, good can't take that in good faith. Art, tell no. people, like, buying Sheeb right now. Like, that's no, just, that's not, just not, not what, what we, we do. do. I know. We're not Moon Boys. We're not Ape ape escape here we cool to see <laughs> what's happening with it but it also doesn't make a lot of sense we're, we're you know we're traders and are we you know we have to uh we have to approach things extremely cautiously not ape into euphoria and the absolute fervor but hey that's crypto markets for you sure is tempting not not something worthy of partaking can okay, we see yeah here. it's cool to see but uh but I, there's nothing really I can do here with Sheeb. You got to let it get back down to some baselines to get it kind of reset, build some support here. But uh, as for now, just nothing I can do. If you're in it, take some profit if you haven't already, and then just leave what you're comfortable with in and forget about it. All right. Um, there would be your look at Sheeb. Big shout out to everybody requesting Sheeb this Friday afternoon. Let's go ahead and get into this next request. We have the following for Crypto Bull 21. Crypto Bull 21 writes, uh, can we look at HUD USD? I think it's a good time to go long. HUD. HUD USD. HUD? HUD. H-O-O-D. Is this a Uniswap? Yeah, probably. Probably. Open up that chart X. Maybe it'll be a little faster this time. Robin Hood is the name of this token with a double B. Robin Hood is the ultimate savior of the common long term hodlers against the big bad evil whales of Crypto Nom. Crypto Ham. There are just too many scams in the DeFi world, and most of them are perpetrated by whales. Robinhood is here to be the anti-whale token every step of the way. Our DeFi smart contract on BSC. Oh, it's a B oh, it's a BSC token. Either way, have you found Hood? And what are your no, thoughts? It's not well, then let's go to PooCoin.app. Is that PooCoin? I think does good. I think I got that. I think I still have Safe Moon up on that, and we marked this out last Tuesday. On Safe Moon, just looked very bullish. And there's no reason to be out of it. It could continue. Uh, hold on, let's see if it, this pops back up. Yeah. What is going on with my internet? Come mm -hmm. on. Working now. All right. Somewhat working. Oh, I gotta turn my VPN off. Maybe that's why it's doing it. Used to load now. Nice. So Safe Moon coming up here. I think I marked out that I liked uh, Safe Moon up all the way up to that 7369 range. I think that it's likely to come up there and test. But what are we looking at? Hood? Hood. Hood, hood, hood. Robin Hood, as it's known. Hood Rat, Hoodler, Robin Hood Swap, RBH. Uh, let's see here. You have the contract address? 
Yes, sir. Let me uh, paste that over to you right now. It's... Oh, it's Robin. Sorry. Ticker is R-O-B-B-I-N. Type that in. Robin. R-O-B-B-I-N. B-B. No options. Robin. Nico Rubin, Inu? <laughs> no way. Um, <laughs> well, it's another oh, dog. All right, all right, all right. Let me see here. Um, go to, uh, open your Google, just type in uh, R-O-B-B-I-N coin. That's all right, hit that coin market cap one, and then you got the address there. You can copy if you want. This should be able to be found here, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, click that address. There, there we, we go. go. Found it, boys. Mm. Uh, hmm. Well, I do like this on this break here. Um, it's nice historical resistance uh, breaking through here. This is likely, um, if I could plug my oscillators on, let's just throw Fisher. I bet that this is a continuation. Just off the looks, oh, Fisher is clearly broken for this. That's no good. But very uh, nice break of the trend here. Um, a, a close above this level, especially above right here, I think is very bullish. Um, Nice long base period here. Uh, I think that you can easily take this up to this uh, resistance level here. I think that it's there's likely a low volume node right here that it'll slice right through. So a close right here is bullish. I like this. I think that you can take this uh, at least for a TP1 if you could plug in a Quadrigo. But I'm, I'm willing to bet that that 1314 is a, about one ATR away. So I'll look uh, there for my first take profit. Uh, let's... That doesn't let me go to the weekly on this. But yeah, I like it. I think that this looks good. This is a great uh, break here. Um, the uh, volume's not crazy high, but I also don't know very much about this coin. I think that this looks bullish. If you're in this, I think that you're good to stay in it. You can put your stop uh, right below this swing low here. And I think that that's a great trade. Uh, the evidence is there for uh, continued momentum well, to the upside. Hilariously enough, wasn't the right Not it? Not the right hood. Apparently they well, wanted the Robin Hood stock. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. This actually looks interesting too. Uh, hood on sushi, uh, or yeah, um, on BSC. Do check this out. Uh, after reading the description, I'm a little. Uh, my interest is a little peaked. With that said, let's get look at the real Robin, and we'll continue. Go to Trading View. Type in Robin. It's the Robin Hood stock. That's what they wanted. They wanted Robin Hood stock that whole goddamn time. Yeah. Well, when somebody writes Hood USD, I usually assume that's like a crypto stock. So let's just look. Robin Hood, Hood market. Yes, there we go. Oh, taking a shit, huh? I mean, it looks terrible. I mean, if you're a knife catcher, you could possibly look to see uh, catching it here. But, I mean, it looks terrible. I think with this big gap down, though, I think you're likely to get some price appreciation to the upside. But this is for reversal traders. Um, let's see. I, wanna, I just want to see if uh, by chance... Maybe uh, it's a good spot for reversal. Doesn't look too bad. Yeah, I want to see a bottom feeders fire out. I, of course, it's not really for uh, other markets and stuff like that. It wasn't designed for that, but it, I still like seeing the results. Oh, hasn't just hasn't fired at all. Interesting, but um, it could be a good spot to look to pick up some Robinhood. But it could get a lot worse. You just don't know. Okay, bottom feeders firing all the way down here. Looks like this would have been the only good bottom feeder signal out of this. So it doesn't look like it tests very well. Um, weekly. Oh, well, the weekly is giving you your first bottom feeder signal. So zero for one as of now, but it's firing at the moment. Robin Hood gapping down. Um, not sure what kind of news. There's some kind of, clearly the earnings right here were negative because it gapped down hard. But, um, it's, seems to be approaching, uh, is there more? on this or is this all the data we got i mean it's approaching its all-time lows um that's usually not the time you want to buy because i mean the same way that all-time highs beget all-time highs all-time lows usually beget all-time lows so nothing to really do here you'll just have to wait till you get some kind of reversal but as for now 
wait for a break of that trend before you do anything on Robin Hood. Okay. All right, we finally got Robin out of the way. Brilliant. Let's continue. Sorry for the uh, confusion in that. Man, did your chart layout change? Did something change about your chart? You're not taking up uh, more. Yeah, I, I switched back to. Um, Preview? Uh, no, I, sw I switched um, indicator setup templates oh, and it gotcha. switches the setup of the. Oh, okay, cool. Now, now it looks back to normal. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I, yeah you opened the bottom feeder. Understood. Let's continue, guys. We are. Uh, yeah. 10 minutes left in the show. A couple requests left. Let's knock a few more out, shall we? This next one comes from Polly B. Polly B writes, requesting Ave. Is it worth staying in now that I've taken a good profit? Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this chart. You're still above uh, resistance and holding it. This must have been that Justin Sunwick. <laughs> what is that? Let's see. Yeah, Ave had a... Uh... 41% day yesterday, then that all immediately got sold into. I don't think that if you've taken profit and you're still in Ave, I think that this is fine to stay in this to see what kind of uh, continuation you get to the upside. Uh, but it does appear, well, with this wacky candle, it's got to give our oscillators time to reset because it immediately, I don't think you would have got this crossover if this wick wouldn't have been so big. Uh, of course, it's going to mess with all the oscillators here. Um, but, uh, it does appear you're getting that crossover on time transformation. So it's not a, an illogical place to, to look to be taking or getting out. If you've already taken profit, um, it could be interpreted as a take profit, uh, early exit signal, but I don't see the weakness here quite yet. Uh, if you've already taken profit with your stop loss to break even, I wouldn't mind letting this sit and seeing what happens of it because you've already locked in the profit. And with everything else uh, being as bullish as it is, um, we might possibly get yeah. um, some appreciation out of this. And if you look at the weekly, I mean, if we close the weekly with a little bit more price appreciation, it's going to be a solid signal on the weekly to the upside. But um, take that with what you will on that early exit. But um, if we start getting below that 13 EMA again, then I think it's a good idea to probably get out of Ave. Would have been nice to take this continuation long on Ave. No kidding. Yeah, All right. Like well, with that said, um, let's get into the next request. It's one inch for right on rice. David Rice, can you take a look at one inch? I've been yeah. watching one inch lately, and it's been doing well. Um, glad I got a bag of one inch that I bought forever ago. I like bought one inch back when it launched, like back here somewhere, and I just held on to it forever. But uh, it looks great here. Nice big wick up here. It's not uh, ridiculous to see that uh, if we get to test down to this lower level, a little bit of a momentum bleed off here before we get continuation. If you were in it, uh, I think that this would be a good spot to probably take some profit if it's uh, a trade and investments completely different, of course. But uh, you'll likely get some sideways action on one inch here uh, before continuation to the upside but it looks strong uh, one inch had a very great day the other day and it's not surprising to see a little bit of that bleed off before we get some continuation but as, as of now the oscillators are telling you that you, you should likely be taking profit rather than looking to get in one inch but i was very happy to see this day on one inch indeed all right shout out to the one inch holders out there let's go ahead and get into the next request what do we have here we got floki ah yes mr kobayashi in the chat keeps insisting that this new floki inu is the is the new shib inu this thing has been well you should have got into it because it's a uh, just an amazing chart on the daily gigantic three white soldiers pattern uh but i could never advise getting into this right here with your baseline so far away but this could run it's a meme guys i don't know um, what's the measured move from, from three days ago? Like, how much is it pumped off Let's that bottom? Let's check it out. Measure that thing. Uh, only 469%, so it could run some more. Yeah, I got plenty of room to go, given how ballistic these damn meme coins seems to go, so... Yeah, it's silly, man. It we can't, really we can't sense, in good faith, cancel anybody to enter now, but, uh, best of luck out there. Thank you, Kobayashi. Uh, where were you three days ago to tell us about this... Yeah, right? The, the on, next man. Shiba Inu, right? It's easy to come in here three days later and be like, yeah, this is the next Shib. It's up 5x. Uh, 
get in. No, 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 we can't do that, Mr. Kobayashi. Please do uh, get in the time machine and forewarn us next time. Uh, let's get into the one of the last requests in the day. It comes from anywhere. It wants to look at Samo. Samo. What is Samo? I don't know. Ah, uh, Samoyed coin. Samoyed coin? It's a meme coin. Solana's mascot. Uh huh. Is this right? Oh, dear. Solana based token. Yeah. Well, congrats to anyone holding that. I mean. Oh, that's the BNB pairings. I mean, I'm assuming that's the same one. Let's go take a look. Uh, not, entirely, not entirely certain. Um, anybody in the chat know what the best way to look up Solana based tokens is? What is the Solana Poo coin equivalent? What is good for looking up Solana coins? Do let us know in the chat. We will come back to Samoa in a few minutes. In the meantime, let's get into more serious tokens here. None of the mean garbage. We got CRO next for Boris Bitcoin. Writes, hi, Jason. Can you get, can I get your opinion on these if it's not too much? Yes, CRO is the first one. I mean, Crow looking really good here. Um, com coming right up on that uh, historical resistance. So it's not what I would call a great spot for an entry. Uh, you don't like to buy the, the tops of these big candles. Uh, but... For all intents and purposes, this looks very strong for Crow. You're just going to have to see how it reacts up here at this resistance. Looks like it's building a rather large... Eh, I mean... Cup and handle, possibly. But uh, it looks strong right now. Uh, I wouldn't advise getting into this right now. The signal for Crow was back here on the continuation. Uh, time transformation, uh, I think, nailed that one here. Actually, uh... Yeah, time transformation nailed it here. Uh, Minx was a little bit behind on that, but I can't really advise entering here, especially right at resistance. But if you get that pop above, and then I think you could look to maybe snag a retest of this uh, this resistance come support, because at some point it's going to come back down and tag that. So wait for the break and then buy the pullback. I think that's the the move here on um, Crow.com, but it looks good. Definitely get seeing the bullish momentum out of it that we're seeing in a lot of the other alts. So. Crow looking good right at resistance. Let's see if we can break it. All right, brilliant. That would be Crow in the bag. Let's get into one of the last requests. It also comes from Boris Bitcoin. He wants to look at A AXS. That that one, AX Axie, mm. AXS. This is one of those ones where I was like, yes, Axie absolutely could pop. Or we could look like Bart Simpson, right? This is what I said. But uh, Axie giving a full long signal today. Um, I, I, I hope that we do come down, uh, bleed a little bit of this out to like the 142, and then I can really take this with confidence. But um, it looks very strong. Axie definitely uh, performing today. Looks like it's an all-time high as well. Weekly all-time high. Uh, closed like this I think would be very bullish, meaning that this continuation signal right here is likely the right play. Oh, well, it would have already been the right play, sorry. But uh, looks really good. I think that uh, if it closes anything like this today, I might look to take a position on Axie. We'll just have to see. But it looks strong. Um, this is another one of those that popped with like Mana and Safe Moon on that meta news, right? Um, yes, at least attributed to be the case. And finally, CH is E Chili's Boris Bitcoin. I see you wanted to amend your CRO request. I'll see if we can still squeeze in your last request. But for now, let's get a look at Chili's. Chili's looks strong here as well. Full long signal. I'm closing back above this resistance here. I would like to see it above this. Uh, but that isn't necessarily what's needed. Uh, closing back above this level, I think, is what is important. So Chili is on the daily. Going to give you that full uh, signal. Everything that you look for in a signal. Rising momentum, um, rising explosion level, uh, WADA, and time transformation crossing to the upside. I think that this looks like a great trade as well. Chili's looks strong. Also going on my list. They just added that to uh, Bybit, so... Adding a lot of stuff to Bybit lately, which I love. Yeah, just recently. I mean, without that other historical data, this just looks like a straight-up continuation close above resistance on uh, on uh, Bybit. But uh, that's the importance of having that, uh, having more data. But yeah, Chili's looks great, man. Thumbs up. 
All right, brilliant. That was a look at Chili's. Shoutouts to Boris Bitcoin. All right, um, I'll try to get your last request in, Boris, but for now, let me try to get in uh, the last request from this gentleman or lady here. Let's take a closer look at this request. Comes from uh, Albert Token, Albert Token 22. I was thinking about moving my Solana to V Chain. I bought Solana at $37. V Chain seems dur dormant, dur dormant. Do you mean dormant? Dormant. I have to look that word up. Any suggestions? All right, Jason. So he's asking about V Chain. You rode well, Solana up. For now, V Chain kind of butting up right against this resistance. I uh, like to see that it's gaining some port here. In this shelf, um, I think that this is starting to build a strong case for a bullish sentiment, but there's just nothing we can quite do yet now. I do like that it's reclaimed this uh, trend that it very briefly broke down below, but got bought up immediately. But the buyback isn't super convincing here, and we're still crossed under on all of our oscillators. So give this a couple of days. I think that... Um, I mean, it might be one of those scenarios where it just pops off, but this is one of those trades where you want to let it prove to you that it's got the momentum to break above these resistances because there is still a lot of space down here that could be tested. But uh, as for now, if you're in, I, I wouldn't, I would not advise entering into a V chain right now, but it's getting close to that situation. I, I think that um, next week is likely to give you that. And I think it'll be on a break and a retest. And I think that that's where you want to be in anyways, rather than um, second guessing yourself on whether this is going to be the real potential breakout or not. But love this level up here. If we do break, I think that it's going to test that 20 cent range. Uh, absolutely. So doesn't look bearish at all, but the, my oscillators and indicators are just not giving me the uh, evidence that I need to be able to take this to the next level. But I think VeChain does look strong. It's getting bought back into a, a solid position here. And uh, this historical resistance acting as support now, I think is going to be what it needs to be able to get to that next level. But there's right. other trades on the table and ETH looks stronger right now. How about now. Solana? Um, take a look at Solana and because he wants to know, should he get out of Solana? He rode Solana up. Now he's thinking, you know, VeChain is in a good spot to, to break out. Solana is Solana done pumping. Let's just see. Let's see if this will work. All right, so Vet versus Solana. I mean, nice uh, basing period here. Nothing quite bullish yet. You're getting a crossover and continuation short, which would mean that Vet would likely lose value to Solana. But I do like this bottoming behavior you got here. Just kind of nicely testing this. Um, I don't think it's a terrible idea. Uh, if you've made good profits on Sol, then why not move it to something else instead of trying to long again? But uh, Vet looks strong on the daily. Nothing that you can enter into right now. But uh, Vet versus Solana, this is most likely that Solana run that we had. And Vet kind of languished. So maybe it is time. Uh getting close to its turn to kind of even itself back out, which things kind of do over time. So I don't think it's a terrible idea. I, I mean, of course, do that with uh, managing your risk and whatever kind of uh, portfolio allocation you want to it. But I don't think that it's a terrible idea. All right, Jason, not totally against the uh, flipping your well, Solana gains into VET. Solana closing above historical resistance. And Solana looks strong too here, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. So it's just kind of hard to know. But looking at that chart and what you would need to see is either Solana and a VET both pump, but VET just pumps a lot harder. Or we start to see VET pump and then Sol go down. But right here, I think uh, Sol looks stronger than VET in that situation. Yeah, exactly. Not after giving that a look, I'm not so sure. Right. So that, it's just kind of how how's it gonna go? Maybe Vet does get a, just a monster pump. I mean, it's done it in the past. But um, if you've made good profits and you want to look to for something else, I don't think it's a terrible idea that uh, Vet could be something to look at. But Solana looks stronger here on the daily than uh, 
than Vet does, in my opinion. All right. Well, that was one of the last requests of the day. We do got to get into the next... Uh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, let's cover a couple of comments here. David Rice, do you have to have a VPN to use Bybit? The answer is yes. Uh, if you're from the U.S., he says, do you need VPN to use Bybit? Yes, from the U.S., you do need Bybit. Uh, you need a VPN to use Bybit. But at the same time, you should be using a VPN all the time anyway. Yeah. It's not just when you're using Bybit. Um, like four bucks a month, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Um, let's see here. Let others get a chance if there's nothing else. Okay, um, we'll see. Uh, here's one for B-Flow. Check out Squid. It's up 2,400% in 24 hours. It must be a great product. Is it even worth looking at? Squid. Squid. Yes. Oh. Here come the animal coins again. It's up just a bajillion. You're the richest man in the world now. Yeah, if anybody caught that, congrats. But we don't exactly go new chasing. Squid, it's a new squid game. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what it's a. Maybe that's what it's off of. I was gonna say, right? Squid game. I hear squid now. I think of that. Netflix have you show. Uh, have you seen it yet? I haven't, but it's been going viral. I don't know what. It's if pretty it's good. Actually, it's is basically it? a Korean Hunger Games. Gotcha. Yeah, I look forward to it. I might check it out over the weekend. Uh, I paid one-time price of $100 lifetime for now. All right, good. That's exactly what you ought to do. Get your locked-in lifetime VPN coverage. And, uh, yes, never never slack on that. Okay, maybe we can afford to do one last one. Just because I'm feeling extra generous today. I love my man Boris Bitcoin. He always comes through with great requests. So let's honor maybe one final request for the man. And it's going to be Boris Bitcoin. Remind me, what was the request you wanted? Uh, let me find it. Let me find it. You didn't want us doing that one. Instead, you came through and you said, where was it? Boris, I lost your second request. Okay, here it is. Uh, Midperp. It wants to look at Midperp. Midperp's right here. Still under resistance. Actually, that looks super strong right there. Giving you a continuation on today. Close A close like this, I think, would be very bullish, especially um, if you're trading an ATR system. I think that you're likely to absolutely hit TP1 from this. It's very solid. Um, a lot of volatility to the downside, but then you got that bullish engulfing coming back, just overtaking all of that. So I think mid perp looks great on the daily for continuation to the upside. Um, but I think that is going to be predicated on a close above this close here at that, let's see here, what level is that? Right about that 4100 uh, range. I think that it's important to maintain above that. If you close above that, then I think you're, you're golden pony boy to at least get up to TP1 around that 4370 range, which would be a nice um, resistance level from the past. And whether that holds or not, we don't know, but this is about making money not about knowing the future. So it looks good. All right, right on, mid perp, last minute there. Um, you know what we neglected to do, right guys? D Live, gotta get those lemons out today. Hey, if you're still with us, consider yourself in luck. Go get it to the D Live chest in just a minute. Let's go, let's go throw some lemons in the box. Hopefully you guys are still tuned in because uh, oh yeah, shout outs by the way earlier. Uh David Rice dropped a diamond super chat. Thank you, Mr. David Rice, giving the extra one back. Thank you so much. That diamond super chat it goes an extra long way. I'm gonna drop uh three hundred and twenty lemons in the chest right now. A lemon drop comes your way in just a moment. All right, lemon drop. I give you guys heads up. Hopefully, you are ready. I'm clicking the distribute button. You have been warned. Thirty seconds to get your lemon rewards. Get them, get them, get them. All right. Here we go. Here we go. All right, we got the lemons out of the way. A great week wrapped up. Absolutely love. Uh, yeah, have another week. And not just that. It was the uh, the week with the new schedule. It was so. So good. Let's have a look here. Yeah, how do you guys feel about it? Having different analysts on um, each day. Yeah, let us know the feedback. Hopefully you guys like it and you did enjoy this week. Our analysts made it on the board. All right. Let's take a look. Who is the big winner of today's lemon giveaway? Crypto Bull 21, 75 lemons. Big congrats to Crypto Bull. David Rice with 43 lemons. Polly B, Jason, and Any Word all taking some lemons home for the weekend. Great stuff, guys. There you have it. It's time to put this 
away. Let's lock this up and hide. There we go. All right. Time to move to the exits. Um, bear with me here one second. I kind of got to find something here. Um, What's that? Add bad. Uh, no, that's... Oh, there it is. Um, just looking for something. Oops, bear with me, guys. Looking for just a little something over here uh, to add to this section. Here we go. All right. Bear with me another moment. And that's it. We're ready to get out of here. Thanks again, guys. Another amazing week in the yep. bag. The Breaking Bitcoin it's Market gonna Update. It's going to be a crazy weekend, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, crazy for a lot of different reasons. Let's check the UFC mm -hmm. schedule because, uh, yeah, you might be watching some UFC this weekend. Let me go quickly take a look at that UFC fight card. I it's also get to do my first real big mint on sunday so i'm pretty excited for all that. right i'm actually super excited because tomorrow's ufc 267 and it's uh a light heavyweight main event jan blahovich versus glovier texiera uh jan blahovich is a fun fighter to watch yes he is what a beast a polish power looking forward to yep. it um if anybody wants to catch that i might be hosting it in another server so if you are interested in catching all that um i'll send you a link it. <clears throat> uh, yeah we have just ton of ufc fans in there so i have to serve them first with that said guys the cc people are always welcome if you are one of our regulars you know the usuals that come through for ufc nights i'll, I'll also uh I'll, I'll i'll invite you over to the other server and if maybe you do want to watch and maybe it. check out the icon project mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly but guys uh jason uh you, is your oh yeah you, is your webcam working yet or no you haven't done the webcam portion yet um, no i haven't got it all set up i i, I got um I'm getting stuff in here for the uh, the mic setup and the arm and everything, but I don't have that. All. That should be set up by next week. Cool. All right. <clears throat> well, we look certainly. You guys could see me. I am beginning to look like Edward Cullen for a Halloween party tonight. <laughs> um, Got my hair did everything yesterday. Hair done, nail done, everything did. That's, everything did. That's your boy, Jason. Well, I hope you party well, dude. Uh, look forward to your return to the show on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday. Still getting used to the new schedule, but we will be back once again. Much love to everybody. Alex, uh, Justin, who appeared on the show. Jason, of course. Crypto Bull, Payday, Mr. Ether, Dark Rico. Absolutely everybody who makes things happen in the server um yeah much love to all of you guys have a great weekend and uh we'll see you in the discord yep. promise next week the show will run more on schedule much love to you all peace out yep and just make sure you guys are trading safely over the weekend like i said for a lot of people this is one of the reasons why i don't trade the weekend specifically but the volatility could be wacky man uh to, to any high leverage traders i would say sit it out <laughs> But uh, things look super bullish for Ethereum. Mostly, I think that the, the play is going to be in Ethereum, not Bitcoin. Um, but we'll see what happens. Just make sure you're aware of that higher time frame weekly and monthly close. Because I think that's going to give us the trend. And if we close above it, game on. Let's go, baby. Damn right. Stay safe, guys. We'll see you on Monday. Yep. Goodbye.